So let's test. We actually didn't test if removing a student actually works. So let me click remove. And as you can see, uh, we don't have the interface for that. So let me come back here and just copy the class tab lecturers remove, copy everything and create a new file, paste everything, save this and save this, select the remove, but let's change lecturers to students. Like so, save. And of course we'll change all references to lecturer to student. And lecturer here as well. That changed to students. Okay, good. So, so far so good. And in the same way, we want to change the order of the form and div here for multiple results. And let's move that form outward. Oops, I deleted it. So tab that and tab that like so. Okay, so at that point, everything is cool. Let's see if we can do it. So let me refresh. Nothing yet. That's because if we go to um, single class view here, we need to duplicate the lecture remove to make a student remove as well. So I will duplicate this like so and change reference to lecturer from lecturer to student like this. Okay, cool. Now if I refresh, then we have remove student. So I want to remove one of the students here and this is what I get. So let's remove Bob Marley and select. Cool. So Bob Marley is gone. So it's working now. Awesome. If I add again, I want to add Bob, Bob Ali, add. Okay, so this is awesome. Things are working as predicted. Now, while we're at it, because we are done here, let me, let me reduce the size of these a little bit more. So I'm going to go to the user ink. And now the beauty is that once I reduce the size here, Anywhere where we are seeing users, it's going to reduce as well because we are using one file. So I'll just change these 14 to 12 here like this. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's much better. At least uh, they are smaller now. Uh, if you want rounded uh, images, you can do that on the image just by adding a rounded, uh, you say rounded, circle like this on the image and that will do that so maybe you like uh, it better this way and you can add a small margin you can also reduce the width let's say width uh, 75 percent like so w75 that should reduce the width but then it moves to one side which might not be good. So what you can do is display block like so, and then uh, margin X auto like that to make it centered. So let's refresh and there you go. Now you may want to leave a slight margin at the top here. So you can say M, uh, this is the top MT uh, one like this. So margin top one, and you see a slight gap there, which is much, much better. Okay, so looking better. Now, if I go to students, you see that even here, we have uh, changed, even on the staff, everything has changed. Maybe I should center some of these, maybe the, uh, what's this, the rank here, I will put this inside a center, tag and move that over here to the other side like so and refresh and there we go so much much better lecture around back to classes just a minute maybe even the name should be centered uh, so first name last name center 
put the center tag here as well. Make sure it's the opening tag. And let's refresh. Okay, something like this. Pretty cool. Classes, lecturers, students, profile. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are done here. Okay, things are looking great. Awesome. Okay, so in the next video, let's do the dashboard because we we should be able to have something here at least. So let's design that and let's fix this as well. Actually, maybe this we can fix right now, the unknown here. So this only shows up if, let's see how we can troubleshoot this. So where this comes from is in the nav bar. So let's go to the nav and this is get school in the auth. So if we go to the auth, let me close all files first. If we go to the auth here and that get runs on the core static here and it's looking for school name, which is not part of the user uh, role. It only happens to be there if we switch a school and then we read that school row and then add it here. So what we can do is we can adjust the user's uh, model to make sure that once we load a user, a user, it also loads the school name just like we are doing here. Okay, so let's go to the user here. And right here where we have before insert, let's add a um, another one. Let me duplicate this. And this one will be after, after uh, select like this. Okay. So after we do a select, we will run a function called uh, get get school underscore name like this get school name so let me copy that and use that for the basis of our function so we're going to be using um let's see here we want to read from the database so let's duplicate this one that mix that so duplicate boom and let's change its name mm -hmm. so we get the data and return the data however we want to use the um, data school ID so we need that school ID so I'll remove this and let's just check if it is set so I'll say if is set like so data school ID that should be good then we can do something so we're going to just read this where exactly like this and instead of where we're going to use first since we just want one row so school um, let's see here school school role is equal to this first and then let's get the school ID right here and school ID should be the same as school ID here okay so if that's the school ID we get a result and if we get a result if is object because the result will be an object then let's add to data so we're just going to say data let's put that here school name instead of id will be equal to the school role that we got and then uh, school like this because that's the role in the school table that contains the school name then let's remove all that so once we do that it should actually work 
So let me log out and log in again. And see if it's going to work this time. So password, enter. So syntax error, unexpected token if on line 111. So line 111, here we go. This is unexpected, which means the error is here. So let's put a semicolon. That should do the trick. Resend. Okay, so we still have unknown here for some reason. So let's check it out and see what we did wrong. So maybe it was here. Okay, let me go back here. And I just want to show sorry here what's the result of this is and die okay just to see if that actually runs so let's log out and log in again so it doesn't go through here so we know that uh, this is probably okay it just didn't go through this section here. So if it didn't, what it means is that uh, in the, let's go to the login, login controller and see what method we're using. We're using the where method. Okay, that's cool. So in the where method, where are we? In the main model, the where, does it check to see if there's after select and it does so there we go so how come things are not working then so back here and let's just put die over here once we get school name let's die right there so back log out at yahoo.com and then password okay so the die did work so which means we are here so is set data school id and now instead of just die let's do a show to see what's in the result yeah so let's go here recent so this is where the problem is. There is a zero there before we get any of this. So that's our issue. This is what we didn't think of uh, when, when dealing with uh, this type of thing. Hmm. Okay, so what I should do here is put a loop. So to loop through the result. So I'm just going to say for each, uh, let's do a for each. Mm -hmm. So for each data as key value, which is nice, let me remove the closing here and just duplicate it there because the result is an array of arrays. So um, if a data we need to use a key here every time. Let me put key like so. School ID, that should work. So let's put key here as well. And the school row is equal to that. Cool. Let's put key here as well. Okay, so that should work because no matter how many records we get, we are going to get a school name for each row because of the for each loop now so let's come back here and refresh and retry so it's saying cannot use object of type class as array where is this 109 so right here mm -hmm. okay so my bad this is an object so we need to use an arrow like this pretty cool same thing here like that go to the end delete that all right cool let's refresh and see more errors Ooh, more errors packet out of order 
I have no idea what this error is. And I have never seen it. Database on line 13. Hmm. Okay, let's see what I may have uh, mistake. What mistake I may have done here. So if we get first here, then it means this is uh, an object. So if it is an object, then school row. Hmm. Yeah, school there. Okay. Let me do this. Remove that. Let's see if things work. So they don't work. So that's not where the issue is. So the issue seems to be when reading from the role. So first, school ID, data, key, school ID. Let me move that. Let's see here. Okay, so which is cool. It shows that the error is right here. Hmm. Okay. No biggie. Let's try and use the where clause here, shall we? And then this one will be is array. And then we just get the first item, like so. Okay, so let's try and see if that works. No, we get the same thing. Packet out of order. All right, so no problem. Let me just undo this a little bit and use the first again. And let's save. So we're going to fix that problem in the next video to avoid making the video any longer. I'll see you then.